things that I said in confidence, and I, I blew up. Did she tell Franny that you were still in love with her? Oh, gee, that's great. That's great. How do you know this? Kevin, uh, no, no. I, you, nobody had to tell me, Kevin. I, you know, I'm just worried about her. That's all. Every time I try to warn her, she just gets furious. Warn her about to... what? Some things I heard at Caroline's. I think Marcia and, and Doug are up to something very strange. And I'll tell you another thing. I think Franny's in some kind of danger. What? There's something going on between Marcia and Doug? I think Marcia's the one who attacked. Heather. What? No, I know it sounds insane, right, and far-fetched, but she's been acting very bizarre since the day it happened. She kept making up reasons for me not to see Heather, and then she suddenly ups and leaves and goes on some strange errand, okay? Right around the same time Heather was attacked. Why on earth would Marsha have any reason to hurt Heather? Maybe Heather found out something she shouldn't have. Did you tell this to the police? Oh, yeah, yeah, I told it to the police. I told it to the police. Do they believe me? No, they don't believe me because I was once involved with Randy, so I was probably just jealous, you see. Well, Kevin, do you think they, they could be right? I'm not letting you out of here until you say you're coming with me to Acapulco tonight. Now, the jet will be at the airport, fueled, ready to go at 6 o'clock. Six? How can I even pack by six? That, you I need to get pack. back. It's warm down there. You don't need all those clothes. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're having second thoughts about spending the rest of your life oh, with me. Oh, you which... no, I'm not. I'm just... I'm worried about Heather. We'll keep in touch. And you know that Heather is the first person who would tell you to grab the chance for happiness when you have the opportunity. I love you so much, Franny. This is our first big step toward our future. We have to take it together. I don't think I could ever say no to you. <laughs> <laughs> I found it outside. Hey, 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 oh, come on. Oh, come on, hey, all right. Oh, oh my gosh, come on, here, sit down. Take it easy. Sit down on the step. Oh. Come on, It'll be all right. Oh. Hey, hey, come on. Oh, take it easy. Oh, no. I'll throw it right in the garbage. Oh, what do you no. say? No, no, no. Just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Oh, God, I can't. I can't let this thing get to me. There's just too much at stake now. Uh, I mean too much at stake. Uh, you can't. Mm. Uh, oh, hi. Oh, you. I'm sorry about this. It was just oh, sitting out there. Oh, honey, what is this? Oh, oh no. Not Lisa, enough. Oh, oh darling. Do I... But this can't be. Kenneth Wayne is arrested. He obviously isn't a man. Oh. Yeah, Johnny, I uh, seem to remember uh, you were the one who found the last one of these, weren't oh, you? Oh, come uh -huh. on. What do you mean You know by what that? I mean. Oh, will you both silly. just stop it? Both of you, just stop it. Now, listen. I'm going to be all right. I really am going to be all right. Yes, I really am. I, I thank you very much for for go, going and uh, to the PTA with me. I'm going to be all right. You just go on back to the hospital. Right, I'll well. be all right. I really am. Okay. Uh, I'll see you later. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, just you've got to keep calm. Remember now. Just think about you're going to have a baby. <laughs> you know. I know. Oh God. I'm supposed to be at the hospital now. I'm supposed to have a checkup this afternoon. I was going to tell Bob about the baby tonight. Oh, hey, I wish I could be here to see his face, huh? <laughs> oh. Oh. You, want, you, you want to read me the note? Let's just get it over with, okay? I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> It's all coming true, just as you promised me it would. What does that mean? What kind of promise? What? Darling, how'd you sign it? Someone who'll watch over you. What did I promise? It's all coming true? Oh, Kim, that sounds like, that sounds like a long-term plan. Yes, but whose long-term plan? And why am I in the middle of it? As 
the world turns. This portion brought to you today by Era Plus Laundry Detergent with the power of protein to clean many tough stains. And by Mr. Clean. For a clean so shiny, you have to ask, is it wet or is it dry? What is that? It's a man's handkerchief. Oh, here, let me see. It has a C, an initial C on it. Does that mean anything to you? No. It doesn't mean a darn thing. All coming true, just as you promised it would? I don't know what kind of... Who did I promise? What did I promise? Look, uh... <laughs> At least we can say it's clean, but it surely is old. Look at this. Never been used, I don't think. But it has these... You see how it's all yellowed okay, around the edge? Yeah, it's... let's just put this uh, back in the box. I'll give it to the detective once. And I'm going to be late yeah, for my appointment at the hospital. Oh, no, shh. Just calm down. I'm going to go with you to the hospital. And I'm so happy that you're going to tell... Excuse me, I'm so glad you're going to tell Bob. That's what... Are you Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Come on, I'll help you with your coat. Right here. Here, baby. I know it was going to be so perfect tonight. Be perfect. I thought we would be just it's... the two of us. Andy was supposed to be gone. Well, now, where's Franny? Where's... Shh. Where's Franny going to be? Your Franny would be with Doug. Oh, that's a happy thought. They're such a perfect couple, huh? Now, you will be back here, ready to leave at 5.30, yeah, right? I, I just have to pack and explain to my parents that I'm running off to Mexico with a man of my dreams. Oh, that's my girl. Mm. I can't believe I'm doing this. Believe it. Mm. Love me? I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Douglas. Marcia. I've come to say goodbye. I'm gonna miss you. A lot. I only wish I could stay to make sure you get off. You leave tonight as you promised you would. Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Franny's agreed to come with me. Everything's right on schedule. Douglas, please destroy that room before you leave and everything that's in it. Why? I don't, I don't have to. You know about that panel I, I had built when I designed the room. One push of a button and presto, it's a closet. Until I come back. Come back? Yeah, after it, after it blows over. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Because I love you and because I've always done everything I could to protect you. And now I won't be able to. Well, see, you don't have to now. I have Franny and, and, her, and her family. And they'll take care of me and, and, and I'll take care of them. The way real families are supposed to. Oh, Douglas. You're such a warm and caring young man. If only... If only what? Nothing. Please take care of yourself. I will. And you do the same. And Marcia, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I... didn't realize how you felt about me. It's, it's my fault. I depended on you too much after I lost Caroline. I don't blame you for one thing any more than I can blame myself for loving you. I always will. Take good care, my love. Kevin, I know how hard it is for you to see Franny oh, happy with somebody you know, else. No, I, yeah, I know what I heard, okay? I'm just, you don't believe me, nobody believes me, I'm going to lose my mind I didn't mind say that, I just think it's, it's normal for Douglas to be upset having, ha after having his wife die. No, He'd no, be no, depressed. No, 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 depressed enough to need a doctor's care. Well, so? He was honest with Franny about how her death affected him. He was? Why didn't he tell her about the doctor then? Hello, Betsy. Karen. Oh, hi. Hi, uh, do you have any news about Heather? I just talked to Hessler. I'm afraid there's no change. All right, well, I guess I'll, I'll get going. See you. Oh, poor Kevin. He's still in love with Franny. Kevin.
Ted's been through a lot. Well, he was telling me some things. He... He seems to believe that Doug and Marsha are keeping things from Franny. Like what? Well, for one, that... that Douglas was seeing a doctor after Caroline died. A psychiatrist. Well, that doesn't surprise me. He loved her very much. And when he lost her so suddenly, he was devastated. I think Kevin is just... Mom, I'm sorry. I'm just so glad right. to see you. Oh, oh, we you. missed you oh, so much. Thank Excuse you. me, listen, I'm going to go and see Heather for a few minutes, okay? Okay, Oh, uh, how is Heather? I'm afraid there's no change. She's still in a coma. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I hate to uh, pile more gloom on top of everything else, but Kim did get another gift. What? Isn't Ken Wayne still in jail? I mean, I thought this was over. Well, apparently he has nothing to do with it. What was it this time? It was a white handkerchief, a linen handkerchief. A man's. With the initial C on it. C? Mm -hmm. Was there a note? Yes. It was another part of the lyric from that song. I cannot forget Only man I ever think of With regret I'd like to add his initial to my monogram Tell me where is the shepherd For this Now, on to the next step. To get Bob and Kim to join me and Franny in Acapulco. And that will work out. Just like everything else has. Because I haven't let anyone or anything get in my way. And I won't. No matter what it takes to make everything come out perfectly for all of us. I still don't understand why my mother had to go to San Francisco with Craig to find Sierra. Well, Lily, I only know what I'm told, and that never includes explanations, just cold, hard facts. Why did she send you to pick me up from school? To ease her conscience? I really don't know, dear. Now, if you'll excuse did me, i Did she say how long she was going to be? Nope, I'm sorry. <sighs> Lily, don't you think it's right for your mom to be there when Craig finds Sierra? I mean, the, the three of them have a lot to settle Oh, that's together. right. That has nothing to do with me, right? Can you please stop acting like that? Oh. You know, I hated leaving you last night. Did you keep on having fun at the Snyder's? <laughs> no, not really. You know, John came by and he picked me up. We drove home. We had a nice long talk, and uh, it turns out that everybody was right. He does have a little hang-up for Sierra. To the point where now he's canceled the research project because of the memories. I hope you didn't tell John I told Sierra about Craig and my mother's affair. Well, I, I did. Look. Why? And that's why Sierra ran away in the first place. Now John's going to hate me, too. I mean, nobody hates you. Well, if you remember, we promised Megan Holden we'd meet them down there to discuss party oh, plans. No, I don't want to go. Come on, let's just stay here for a little well, while. You can't just leave them down there. Why not? <laughs> Okay, look, why don't you go upstairs and uh, change your clothes and just kind of freshen up and unwind, then I'll meet you down there, okay? Then can we have a dinner back here? Okay. Light a fire in the den, turn on some good music. What do you think? That sounds great. Really, really, I have to go. It's, it's not, not fair. <laughs> See you, okay. Walsh residence? Oh, hello, Ambrose. Yes, Lucinda told me about the new will. She said you were going to change it to divide everything equally between Lily and Sierra. You have? Good. 
Yeah, but uh, you missed a spot. Where? Right there. When's Lily gonna get here? Lily? You could care less if she comes out here or not. Well, all right. I guess I have to admit I am thinking a little of Dusty. You know, Lily's got a few good things going for her. Yeah, tell me about it, big brother. Yeah. Well, hey, Blue Eyes. Hey. Oh, I like the shoes. You like these? Yeah. Finally, somebody noticed them. Thank you. They're brand new. I got them today. Check them out. <laughs> They're great. Oh, did you talk to Lily again about the sleigh ride for the party? I still think it's a terrific idea. Well, I do, too. And I, I'll talk to her when she's in a better mood. When's that going to be? Uh, when? Dusty, can I talk to you? Okay. Hi, Lily. Uh, would you mind? We want to be alone for a couple minutes. No sweat, ma'am. Lily, what's going on? My mother's made out a new will. She's left half of everything she owns to Sierra. How do you know that? Because I heard Jane talking to Ambrose on the phone. Well, Lily, I don't know why she wouldn't. I mean, Sierra's your sister. Dusty, who's I am pleased to tell you that it all checks out, as they say. Everything's fine. The baby seems normal, and <laughs> you're obviously glowing. Uh, yes, well, I I'm planning on telling Bob tonight. That's wonderful. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Hello. I'll be right there. Kim, I have to run. Oh, yes, by all means, girl. I'll see you uh, next week. Definitely. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Kim? So tell me, how is the uh, next generation of Hughes doing? <laughs> just fine. I have the baby's just fine, and I'm going to be a textbook case and a living example to mature women. I know, that's wonderful. <laughs> did you see Bob? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, look, I told, I told him about the gift. Oh, Lisa, well, no. Oh, I don't want that to spoil tonight. <sighs> well, I just won't let it spoil tonight. So... Here's to the future. <laughs> Hi, is Dr. Hughes there? It's his daughter. Oh, how long is he going to be in the meeting? No, no, that's okay. I'll call back. All right. Well, not now, but uh, sometime very soon. Please, I need to sit down and have a nice long chat with you about things past. And, oh, I need to get some things off my chest. Well, of course, Lisa. Uh, for heaven's sakes, there isn't anything that we can't talk about. Uh, for instance, you are the only person in the whole world who knows that I'm pregnant other than Andre Samuel, so... I know, I know. I I'm very honored about that, too. Now, go ahead. Have a wonderful time tonight with Bob. Yeah, I hope he doesn't get there before 7.30. Oh, I didn't ask yeah. you. Uh, did you, did Bob hear from Tom? Oh, no. No, he didn't. Uh, well, I'm going to go over to Fashions Limited and, uh, try to see if I can track Tom down there. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, come on. Hey, hello. Oh, Twice boy. in one day. Uh, you feeling better? Yeah, yes. Oh, you've seen Dr. Samuels. Boy, she's one of the best gynecologists and pediatricians on staff here. Nothing serious, I hope. Nope. Bye, Johnny. Oh. Hi, Still no change. I have been racking my brains trying to figure out who would want to do this to her. I still think it has something to do with her working here and her finding out something that maybe she should have Gibson, found I appreciate all the amateur detective business, but I'm here to see Miss Talbot. Why? Police business. Is she here? No. All right, tell her she's cleared to go to Houston. We have no grounds to detain her. Wait, I think, I think that's a mistake. Oh, yeah? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you want to know why I think it's a mistake? No. Well, I'll tell you anyway, because her desk is cleared. That's why she was going to leave here if you gave her permission or not. Plus, she and Doug have been keeping a lot of secrets lately. Uh-huh, and you used to be sweet on Franny Hughes, who's now tight with Cummings. It kind of colors your suspicions a little bit, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, because I know that Doug was once under a doctor's care right after his wife died. And they don't want anybody to know about it. Plus which, Marsha was out and unaccounted for at the time Heather was attacked.
What are you doing here? We said goodbye. Kevin is downstairs at this very minute telling Detective Munson that you were under Dr. Strauss's care. He knows Strauss's name? No, but he knows you were seeing a doctor. How? I don't know, unless he heard me talking to Elaine. Damn it. I should have taken care of Kevin a long time ago. Yeah. Douglas, no. No, don't do anything foolish. Not right, now when no. you're so close to leaving Marcia, with Franny. Okay. You go right on to the airport into Houston. Douglas, it's planned. please come with me. We can leave together now, just the two of us. No one knows you as I do. No one can love you the way I do. Please. No, you're wrong. Franny knows me, and she loves me. We have each other now, and soon Dr. Hughes and Kim, so just go on back to Hughes. No, Douglas, please. No. Oh, God. Marsha was stalling when I wanted to see Heather the day she was attacked. She came up with some cockamamie story about the bar receipts being too high, and then off she went. And plus, she's been incredibly nervous lately now. I realize that I'm an interested party. I love Franny Hughes, and you guys desperately want to nail me on this attempted murder thing, but I have seen things here. I've heard things here that are very suspicious. Now, do you want to hear what I have to say or not? Okay. I'm going to call headquarters. Meet me at the bar. Doug, I'm back. Your traveling companion and wife-to-be, I'm here. Doug? You in there? portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by Pringles Potato Chips, regular light rippled cheesums and sour cream and onion, and by Antiseptic Scope with T25. Scope leaves your breath minty fresh, not medicine-y. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. As the world turns. Oh, wow. 
This house is so beautiful. We're supposed to have fun planning this party, okay? Don't do that, Dusty. Don't you understand? My mother just cut me out of her no, will. she did not. She's dividing everything between you and Sierra. I mean, the girl's your sister. Why wouldn't she do? <sighs> Look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's jade, no, that's what... <laughs> God, it must be like a fairy tale, waking up every morning in this place. Oh, yeah, it is. Grim fairy tales. <laughs> Look, could, <clears throat> could I use the bathroom? I'll get up the stairs on the right. Okay. okay. I can't wait till Meg is gone. We can have dinner in the den. I need to be alone with you. Hey, 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 what's going on? We're just uh, Hi, Dr. Dixon. making plans for a party we're going to have. Yeah? So. Hey, listen. I was just thinking, I don't have anything to do tonight. How about I take you guys out to dinner? What do you say? Caroline's? Okay. That sounds great. Dusty, we okay. already have plans. Oh, um... This house is like a fantasy. Oh, hi, Dr. Dixon. Oh, hello, May. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? How I'm doing well. I tell you, I, I think that John's a little lonely, and I don't see why we can't change our plans tonight. Yeah. If you don't know, I obviously can't explain it to you. That big, maybe not as nice, but that big. Did, uh, did you notice Doug uh, watching us all the time I was talking to you? It's not a criminal offense, Kevin. No, it's not. But it's all part of the detention of this place. They are definitely covering something up. I mean, he tells me one thing, she tells me another thing. Such as? Okay. When Marcia found out that I had to stay overnight in the green room, she was very upset, like maybe I would discover something that I shouldn't, you know. She said Doug didn't want me in there, period. Thirty seconds later, Doug comes over to me and says I can stay as there as long as I want to. Mm -hmm. And Marsha nearly flipped her wheels mm -hmm. when I told her that I told Doug. And, and she what said, does any of this have to do with the attack on Heather Dalton? I am just trying to say to you that something strange is going on in here. Detective Munson, how are you? Have you had any more news about uh, who Heather's attacker is? Uh, no, but we're expecting a breakthrough very soon. Oh, good, good. Uh, Mr. Cummings, uh, when did you first find out about the attack? Oh, I was up at the lookout with Franny. Marcia Talbot drove up and told us about it. Uh, and uh, what time is that? Well, it must have been around 6.15. Uh, we left there and went straight over to the hospital, and we were there by 7 o'clock. So. Why? Oh, I'm just uh, trying to establish a time frame of who found out when. Oh, I see. Well, speaking of time frames, I was expecting someone at 5.30. If there are no more questions? No. No. Excuse me. It's about Heather Dalton, Miss Talbot. Did you know that she was attacked earlier today? Attacked? No. By whom? What's up? Something wrong? You may be right, Kevin. Maybe something strange is going on around here. Stay alert. I'll be in touch. There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out to be. It's okay. It's okay. Now listen, I can, I can just explain it all. All right. See, it's it, it's it's like a tribute to her. Why? Why to Kim? Franny, you remember this morning I was telling you about someone in my life, someone who was very important to me, right? 
who, who taught me that my dreams were possible if I just believed in them strongly enough. That was Kim. You knew her before you came to Oakdale? Yes. I was a busboy at this, at this club in Houston where she was singing, and I would listen to her she night did, she, after she night. She didn't remember was, you. She didn't... Uh, no, of course she didn't remember me. I told you when I was 15, I was a skinny little kid. But Kimberly Sullivan changed all of that. Now, I just lost my mom at that point, you know, and I'll tell you, she got me through it. And now I'm here in the same town with her. In love with you. Don't. Are you the one that's been sending her those gifts and notes? I have been giving her little hints that I was here, yeah. Presents to let her know how I feel about her. And I tell you, it's, it's worked out even better than I thought it would. What do you mean? Well, I met you. I fell in love with you. Franny, what, what is it? You look, you look so frightened. Don't be, please. It, now that we know the truth, there is nothing standing in our way, you know? My jet is at the airport. It is ready to take us to Acapulco. And our future together. This whole house is like a museum with all these beautiful things. Well, you know, Mrs. Wall, I don't understand you. Obviously. He wouldn't have come over here and asked us to go out with him if he didn't need some cheering up. Fine, you cheer him up. I mean it to say I'm not going with you. Why do you act like this? Why are you so tense all the time? Oh, we, we, can, we can have dinner tomorrow. Have dinner? Don't you get it? I need to be alone with you. Hey, listen. Listen, you guys ready to go? Oh, uh, no, uh, Dr. Dixon, I think I'll pass. Uh, Why? I don't feel very well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Lily. Anything an old medicine man can do to help you out? No. Could I, um, hitch a ride to you to 106? Sure, sure. What's up on 106? Well, from there I can get a ride to go back all the way oh, home. Oh, no. Come on. I'll give you a ride home. Sure. Really? Sure. Oh, thank oh, you. <laughs> Listen, John, I just have to pick up some things I left at the stable. Excuse okay. me, guys. Okay, well, actually, I left some things there, too, so I'll go with you. Okay? Bye, Lily. I can't get you to change your mind? Yes. Okay. All right. Hey, Lily, take care of yourself. You feel better. Thanks. Okay, everybody. Route 106, here we come. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> Oh, I'm supposed to be in Steve by the elevator. I'm uh, hi. I, I'm so glad. I, I was afraid you'd gone. I'm glad you're still here. All right, I'm still here. Okay, just a minute. Excuse me. I'm sure, Betsy. Come on, sit down. What's the matter? I just talked with Martha. Where is she? She. She's in London. In London? Yes. And she said that the marriage was over. What? Yes, she said it was over. It was done with. Well, did she tell you what happened no, between them? No, no, no. She didn't say a word. I don't get this. I, I mean, here they are. I, I, sure, they've had their problems because of separations and jobs, but they're crazy about each other. Well, Margot said it was over, and she meant it. And I know she did, because I could tell by the tone in her voice. If we only knew what happened between them, maybe we could help. Hey, did you do a friend a favor? Sure. Take me out and buy me a stiff drink and just talk to me for a little bit. I can tell you're all dressed, you're ready to go, and you don't have to be home until 7.30. I know Ken wouldn't mind if, if you just gave me a little comfort, please. Sure. You seem to know my schedule better than I do. <laughs> well, that's because Kim has told me all about it. Well, let's go to Caroline's. It's close by. Sure. Hello? Susan, it's Detective Munson. Oh, did you uh, get any information about the latest gift? Not yet. It's being analyzed now. Actually, I was calling to speak to your daughter. I want to ask her some questions about Doug Cummings' relationship to Marsha Talbot. Why? I just 
learned today that Doug Cummings was under a psychiatrist's care after his first wife's death? Well, that's not very unusual, is it? Well, by itself it's not, but... we're also getting some conflicting stories concerning the attack on Heather Dalton. Well, you certainly don't think that Doug and Marcia had anything to do with that, do you? Just have Franny call me, would you? Uh, yes. All right. Dear Kim and Dad, sorry to put this in a note, but Doug's plans changed suddenly. Am I leaving for Acapulco tonight? I know this sounds sudden, but Doug was so insistent and irresistible. Talked me into going with him. I'll try calling Dad at the hospital, but if I miss him, I'll see you both in sunny Mexico. Uh, Janet, hi. Uh, is my husband in, please? Oh, no. When did he leave? No, no. Okay, there's no message. Thank you, dear. Uh... Uh, okay, Meg, I'll just wait out in the car and then we'll go to dinner, all right? Okay. Hold on. See you there. So long. I'll be out in a sec. Right. So you wrangled the dinner invitation, huh? Congratulations. That's fast work. No, it wasn't me. Lily's the one that had the argument and got into a snit. I just got to take her place. So when are you knocking off here? I think I might be staying here tonight. You know what you are, Holden, is weird. Why do you want to stay here tonight? Don't you worry about it. You just behave yourself in the backseat of Dr. Dixon's car, all right? Now get out of here. <laughs> So what do you think, ma'am? Miss Lily's getting more and more tense. Arguing and fighting with everybody. What do you suppose she really wants? You just missed Dusty and Meg. I know. I waited for them to leave. Why's that? Can I have a man, please? What's the matter with you? Your business. You know, it was sure nice of Dusty to invite Meg to dinner tonight. tired of taking orders from you. Well, that's just too bad, because I own these stables, and I'm in charge here. <laughs> you may be in charge, but you're not in control. What? I am tired of having you say one thing and meaning another. I have no idea what you're talking about, You Holden. know exactly what I'm talking about. I gave you an order, Holden. So what? I want you to leave now. No, you don't. I'm gonna teach you how to relax and stop fighting the things you cannot fight. So I'm pressing she arrives. Okay, thank you. 
Oh, sorry, Elaine. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Franny, what is it? What's wrong? Just please stay away from me. What? Just stay away. No, wait. Wait, what, what are you talking about? It's this me, room. Douglas. This room. It's sick. sick. You're sick. What do you mean, sick? What? Sick to love someone? Sick to be grateful to someone? If you love her, why are you terrorizing her no, with these kids? You no, know no, no, how no, frightened no, wait, You she don't was. understand. Now, please, let me just explain no. it to you. No. Franny, 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 Franny. Listen, when Caroline died, I thought my life was over. You understand me? I didn't deserve her. And her dying, it just proved that to me. And then I went, went on that cruise, and, uh... You were on that ship. Yeah, of course. My doctor recommended it. What doctor? The doctor who was helping me get over my depression after Caroline died, see? I will never forget that moment. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't leave our stateroom, see? And then finally my doctor, he insisted that I take a walk with him, right? And, and up there on the deck, I heard a voice. I mean, I thought I was dreaming. But, the, but no, we went into the main salon, and there she was. She was singing for the passengers, you know? But, but really... Really, she was singing for me. She didn't know you were there. No, Franny. See, now, the thing is, you're not listening to me. Anyway, anyway, then I found out that, 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 that she was married to your father. And you were living here. And uh, I came here and I built this restaurant. I, I, I built this room to keep, my, to keep my memories of her alive, to keep my feelings alive. Until I could let her know. It's all gonna work out, you know? Just the way I planned it. We're gonna go to Acapulco. We are. And, uh, Kim and Bob, they're gonna join us there, you know? And I am finally, I am gonna have the family that I always dreamed of having. You gotta believe me. You're at the center of my dream. Doug?